And you notice something about this? Uh, it's a computer. Oh, shit, it is a computer. Yo, did they leave the, um... Ha! No wow. Way. They left the, uh, I guess, what is this, a wireless dongle? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, it's the next day. And I've come back with some tools and an interest to take a look at this. And you know what? I wonder if the screen might still be good. I wonder if this is the touch panel because I look back there and I don't see as much damage on the actual LCD. So, well, let's look at it first. First off, Thice found this, which I don't know what it is. It's either, oh, you know, we do have some information there. Is it Wi-Fi or is it a mouse? Mm, it's hard to read. It's made by HP though. It looks like it's a mouse. You know, these are very useful because if you're using Parsec to remote into a headless machine, it still wants to have a mouse. It, Windows doesn't handle not having a mouse very well. So if you have this connected, then you can have a headless machine that doesn't need a mouse actually plugged into it. So that is useful. And then, what is this that we have? I have, hmm. Well, really good news. I looked it up and these both, I and mean, this might be a keyboard and mouse dongle, and then this, this might be a mouse specific dongle. And so if I ever want to make a headless system, I can just add this and I can also add like an HDMI dummy plug. And that way I can just have a computer in a closet and then I can remote into it with Parsec. And then anytime I, re I remote into it, Parsec will send commands to like to, to share the display or to move the mouse. But if you don't have a monitor plugged into a computer or a fake dummy plug monitor, or, and if you don't have a mouse or keyboard plugged into it, Windows gets so weird whenever you tell it to modify something that isn't there. So this helps. Just FYI, I am doing it over here. Just in, you, you don't know about these things. If it blows up, it's going out into the curb. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh my God, look at that. It's just the touch panel that's bad. Oh, this is amazing. I bet they got so angry because it's Windows 7 and punched it. Or maybe it fell down, but I bet that's what the issue is. Oh, this makes me so happy because the, uh, the thing works. Once the display works, that's fine. Because this would be the perfect machine for like CNC something or other. Just don't touch the glass. Put packing tape over it. Oh, this is awesome. Please boot. I check the hard drive sounds because I hear some boot. Okay. So we just got normal hard drive sound. It's not clicking or anything. It's just doing the normal seeking. So we'll just let it run. Look at this. They haven't even removed the stickers. And then look at this. When I was carrying it here from the side of the road, I noticed they haven't even removed the plastic. That's, that's horrible. So the reason I'm so excited about this is because already this proves that any issues it has is just an issue with whatever is installed on it, but it boots. Like now I see the mouse cursor is there and yeah, it's pretty good. So I can easily put Linux on this. Looks like it might be something like a 1366 by 960 display, so, or 1368 or whatever the, the, the number is. Looks kind of like it's going to be like a lower resolution, like lower than HD. But that's kind of what I expect. This is, let's see, 
Ooh, a Touch Smart 300. I didn't know they went that low. Let's look that up. Something tells me it's going to be boot looping. It has an all in one Athlon 2X2235E, 2.7 gigahertz P uh, CPU. I don't know what that means. I'm not an AMD person. It's from 2009. Oh. Resolution of 1600 by 900. That's pretty good. That's actually pretty respectable. And it's good that it didn't have 1080 because if it did have a 1080 display, it would probably be too many pixels for the CPU to handle. So you could even play like early 2000s games like SimCity 3000 on this and not have too many issues. Okay, so it is looping. I kind of wonder, is, is it the display losing power? Is there a power supply issue? It might be doing one of those things where it has to do like a really complicated disc check. Like, is the mouse going away when it's blacking? No, it's not. Okay. So it's not the display. Okay, so it's just an issue with Windows. And we all know how Windows, especially on computers of unknown origin, Windows just gets messed up so much. So, so yeah, this, I mean, I still want to get in there and see what's on there, but this means that the hardware is good. I'm so excited. Okay, so it's been running for about 20 minutes and it's still doing that thing. Let's just turn it off one more time. Then turn it on. And then I'll let it run for a little bit longer and we'll see. Oh, now we get this. Nice. Good. 22 seconds. Well, I have no keyboard. So I guess it has to. Man, this computer smells bad. It smells like it's been in some... You know when you go to someone's house and it just smells like old food? This just smells like old food. It's going to need a deep cleaning. At the very least, I'm going to run home and get some things to wipe it down with and clean out the insides because yuck. But should I even bother if it's going to be like a machine shop PC? Maybe not. Okay, so it's just doing the same boot looping thing. I say what we should do is we should get some malware bytes onto a uh, USB stick that I don't need that I can format. And then I can also get maybe a Windows 7 recovery thing. And I'll get my keyboard. Maybe we can pull up the command prompt so we can get past that lock. We can get to safe mode even. We could try that. And maybe we can see what kind of viruses we got on this because now we're doing Dr. Mario here. Dr. Computer, because it's uh, definitely got some issues with it, and it probably has some viruses. So guys, I'm looking through my disks, or at least I was last night, because there's really no way to get that computer to really fix itself, because its repair thing doesn't work, and it doesn't boot off USB. So I couldn't find a Windows 7 Professional, disc i do have windows 7 probably won't work from that but i was able to find a really shady as with all these discs discs i've collected over the years like i have windows 7 that doesn't need the key it's like from it's from, from russia in 2010 or whatever but so it, it is well at home here even using my old discs from uh, like 2008 but i burned a cdr windows 7 repair cd no idea just came from a random website but you know what like you can't go wrong with the computer found on the side of the road. You really can't. And plus, I like using CDs on those because viruses don't get stuck on the CDs. So I had to restore back to July 2022. And we'll let that do its thing. Whoa, it, I don't think it made the sound before. <gasps> ha! It did restore it. Oh my god, guys. Like, so that person, they have their name, it's their last name, and because of that, and because I know where the house 
I know like what Washington Island to pick the state. I'm going to blur this out because I was able to find where she lives, where she moved to, her eight relatives, and her three email addresses dating back to the 1990s. It's a little creepy when you can pull up that much information on somebody. smells like some people they just have a certain smell of the foods that they cook it smells like a lot of my friends homes a laptop. Well, Western Digital, a good brand. Clearly, I'd go with an open source option. This person didn't know, like they had like cracked 2007 Microsoft Office and stuff like that. Like there are open source alternatives. Yeah, they are. They are. Um, there were pirated films, like. Mm -hmm. Here, you want to take this? There were pirated films, but they were all those like really shitty early ones where it's like just a camera in the theater. He didn't actually get any of the ones oh that are like good. God. So it's like, Come the, on. what? There's nothing good here. He could have he could have sailed the high seas. I know, like, and they were like Yiffy torrents or whatever the term is, but he got like these really shitty ones. Oh. And there was so many bank forms and stuff. So maybe he was oh. doing call center stuff. I don't know. Mm. I don't want to be because he he was Indian. So I don't know if that's racist or something like that. But, oh. but there was like <laughs> there was like fifty bank forms from like every single bank and there was IDs from different people and stuff like that. Oh, no. So, but people that he seemed to be friends with. So it's like, I don't know what he was doing. Then there was a bunch of Audi PD, uh, PDF manuals, which are easy to get online. But the only thing that I thought was memorable enough to save is this. <laughs> There's so much black stuff in this, like Maybe there were smokers or something. Oh my God. Look at that. That is disgusting. I just realized this fan is blowing into the power supply. What does it look like in there? Oh, I'm not, I'm, I'm dreading this. I'm really dreading this. Well, I might as well pull this off.
plastic's all like yellowed and has whatever that black stuff is on it. It's not like nicotine smoke, it's like something else. You know what, it's not as bad. That can just do a quick blowout and that'll be fine. God damn, what a mess. What an absolute mess. I expect to come back in on Monday and all these parts are like on the floor, <laughs> but oh well. It still works amazingly. And even the touch screen works. I just need to get like, they build it, like they build it laying down, they add all the stuff on top. So in order to get rid of the glass in the front, I have to take everything off to get, because they don't want any screws on the front. That's how they always go. Yeah. Okay, so this was the hardest connector, the video connector.
How they do the touch screen? Uh, they, they have two cameras and they detect where your finger is. That's how they do touch screen? No wonder it's so garbage. Oh. So I can just replace it with a piece of plastic glass and I'll just touch screen. So it's not really a real touch screen then, right? Yeah, it's just a piece of glass. No wonder it still works. I was like, how can it be cracked and still work? Apparently there's an air gap behind it. We got so far. Okay.
This entire connector just fell apart. Like, seriously. Oh my god. So I jammed it back in there and uh, I had to lift it up with another screwdriver. Right, I forgot to screw these down. Now to push it back together. I bet that connector is only going to fit in there one more time and then this panel's toast. Okay, I've decided that, in fact, 
that was the right thing to do because I can never open this up again to put new glass on it. So I'm not going to. I'm not going to screw this on here. is tar from tobacco smoke. That's gross, whatever it is.
Okay, so we finally got it working. That's, that is simply kind of amazing, but... Uh, I was not certain I would get it to run again. Well guys, it's the next day, and so I forgot I installed Ubuntu on this SSD, and this computer, I have Modern Marvels playing on YouTube, wireless works, and this is the utilization. And the sound's good too, so this is actually quite useful. Even though the so LCD panel itself is exposed, I can Works easily off. take this off, and I can put new the the of the fire on the suit itself. in here. To understand the level of protection the garment provided. They rely on pyromanic thermal sensors to help them predict the sort of body burn sustained by the intense heat. 